Welcome back. If you just joined us, you watch the news at 10 live on Channel Television at Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. President Buhari challenges ministers designate to embrace teamwork to achieve his administration's promises as he opens a two-day retreat for the incoming cabinet members. Former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Diazani Alison Madweke challenges the seizure of 40 million naira worth of jewellery from her home by the EFCC, says action violates her right to own property. Non-academic staff in public universities begin five-day warning strike following the expiration of a 14-day ultimatum to the government over welfare issues. And Sudan's ousted President Omar al-Bashir appeals in court at the start of a corruption trial. Police accuse him of receiving millions of dollars from Saudi Arabia. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com. YouTube.com slash channels web has videos of our shows. We return to legal matters. The former Minister of Petroleum Resources, De Zani Alison Madweke, is challenging the seizure of 40 million naira worth of jewelry from her premises by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Mrs. Alison Madweke, who is currently in the United Kingdom, is alleging that the EFCC violated her fundamental right to own property and to appropriate them at her discretion under sections 43 and 44 of the Constitution. She is also accusing the anti graft agency of entering her apartment illegally and taking the items without any court order. The EFCC had secured an order of the court temporarily forfeiting the expensive jewellery to the federal government on July 5th this year. The EFCC counsel, Ruti Miliripo, in an ex parte application, told the court that the jewellery comprising watches, wristwatches, beg your pardon, necklaces, bracelets, bangles, earrings, a customised gold phone and more were reasonably suspected of being acquired with proceeds of unlawful activities of the former minister. The former minister lists the jewellery to include 419 bangles, 315 rings, 304 earrings, 267 necklaces, 189 wristwatches, 179 necklaces and earrings, 78 bracelets, 77 brooches, and 74 pendants. The court has adjourned the case until August 29th. Meanwhile, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission today arraigned Mrs. Isabella Oshoding and Bob Oshoding before a federal high court sitting in Abuja for alleged 22.9 billion naira fraud and money laundering. The accused are facing 25 counts for fraud and receiving the said money from the former National Security Advisor, Colonel Sambo Dasuki. The EFCC is alleging that the defendants had on 16 occasions received the money in the sums of 500 million naira, 700 million naira, 750 million naira, 125 million naira, 350 million naira, 170 million naira, 85 million naira, 60 million naira, 50 million naira and others totaling 2.9 billion naira. They have, however, pleaded not guilty to the charges with their lawyer insisting that the transaction was a civil commercial transaction between his client and the federal government. But the FCC is insisting the alleged offences contravene Section 15, Subsection B of the Money Laundering Act of 2011 as amended in 2012. More news coming up on the news at 10. Here's Ibrahim Adra in our Abuja studio. Hi, Ibrahim. Great to see you. Hi, Omarachi, and welcome, everyone. The Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities and Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities today began a five-day warning strike from following what they describe as the delay on the part of the federal government in addressing their grievances. One of the contentious issues is the earned allowances which the non-teaching staff claim there were short change in the sharing formula. Compliance to the warning strike is almost total in many parts of the universities, while a few others continued with their academic activities. It's traffic jam at the gate of the University of Ibado in Oyo State. Those who cannot wait have to make a U-turn, while others get off to continue the journey on foot. 
The roadblock is one of the ways the non-academic staff union and the senior staff association of Nigerian universities are using to vent their displeasure with the federal government over what they call failure to fulfill promises made. The protest is in obedience to the call by the national leaders for a warning strike to begin. This is the most unfair. They should tell the public if things that we are asking, if you are asking for too much, and if other we are asking if they are damned too personal, they should tell the public. If it is not so, they should please take care of public institutions. They have killed public primary schools, they have killed public secondary schools, they have killed college, technical colleges, they have killed college, college of education, they have killed federal polytechnics. You understand? They are suffocating federal investors now. What legacy are they leaving behind? Was taken over by Uncle ACH. Academic work is not interrupted at the Federal University of Technology, Akure, in Undo State. But the unionist wants the federal government to take this warning seriously. Should the federal government fail uh, to do something, something concrete, within this week, within this period of this warning strike, the, the next action that will be followed will be the indefinite strike. It's a large turnout of members of the Federal University of Technology Uwere in Imo State. The leaders of NASA Union insist the strike is compulsory for all members and promise to monitor compliance. Over three issues, payment of end allowances, national secretary of some school matters, are uh, renegotiation of the 2009 agreement. These are three issues, main issues, while we are working on this one strike. Moving to the North Central, union members at the University of Jos also joined the warning strike. They decide to hold a town hall meeting first. The effect of this strike in the University of Joshua is total and comprehensive. As you can see, everybody is going back to his office and pick one or two things that is in the office and leave. Because the monetary team will be going around and see if there's any defaulters will be sanctioned as well. The national president of the Joint Action Committee is at the University of Lagos branch where he restates the demands of the union. Up till now, government has not come up with a secular, directing, directing a candidate of the Federation because, to, because they will now include them in the payment, in monthly salaries. And they have not informed the, uh, the National Universities Commission to inform the vice chancellors to re reinstate them to their duty post and also include them in the, in the salaries of in the payroll of the university. The students who bear the brunt of the industrial action are hopeful of response from the federal government so that these university workers who have vowed to make this fight to finish can return to work. Let's now turn attention to the event of the past weekend. Former Deputy Senate President Ike Kuremadi today returned to the country after escaping a humiliating attack by members of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, in Germany. Senator Ike Kuremadi, who arrived at the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja this evening, described his assault as the actions of a few misguided individuals and not a representation of the character of majority of Nigerians. He says he will not be seeking for punishment for the individuals who assaulted him and that he has forgiven them. Yeah, yeah, it was. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I said the people had eggs. So you don't go to, to a function with, uh, with uh, fresh or raw eggs. So it doesn't happen. So it was actually planned. So, but I'm fine. You say we should be seeking justice for the government that is well, as I said, I've forgiven that, I've moved on. So I just moved on. So it's the government of Germany, they have whatever they want to, they are free to do that. Yes, it is. Aside from the reasons they gave, do you expect anything personal to that attack? No, I don't think so. I think um, it was just uh, some people who are misdirected, misguided, because they were, uh, um, they were, um, I had a feeling that they wanted in place of alcohol or drugs. You know, so they don't represent the, the feelings of our people. What does that pertain for? I learned nothing. I was absolutely nothing. Nothing. I had the, the people who organized have sent me a letter. I apologize for what happened. There's no problem. Everybody's free to go anywhere. There was just some misguided people. It was called miscreants. They, they don't represent the behavior of Nigerians abroad. Let me just say that the leaders he was mentioning were very responsible for getting him out of uh, jail in the first place. So what we would do in the circumstances is um, to leave him with the body of history. The 
the test of his conscience and uh, possibly the, um, the precautions of ingratitude. So, so I hope he won't, uh, he won't go to the extent of attacking any of the Southeast leaders anywhere. In the meantime, the Nigerian embassy in Germany has requested a thorough investigation into the attack on the former Deputy Senate President Ike Kuremadu. The embassy says the perpetrators of the assault should be identified and swiftly brought to justice in accordance with the German law. The statement adds, quote, this would deter future acts of violence against officials of the Nigerian government on German soil, particularly against the backdrop of threats by the proscribed IPOP to carry out similar attacks on more Nigerian dignitaries, especially those from the southeastern part of the country, end of quote. Senator Ike Koremadu was attacked in Nuremberg, Germany, at a social cultural event. Still on this matter, German police authorities have been speaking on the incident of the assault on the former deputy Senate president, which happened in Nuremberg over the weekend. The police there described the incident as a demonstration by those who attacked the lawmaker and that no arrests were made in relation to the fracas. The police officer was speaking to a freelance journalist, Runa Meyer, in an exclusive for channels television. Hello? Hello? I have a few questions about the case. Uh, there is nothing, uh, uh, not very much uh, about this. Um, the secretary from Nigeria came and about 30 people uh, demonstrated against him and then he, um, uh, the police was called and they calmed the situation and the secretary or minister who he was uh, drove away with his car and uh, everything was over. There is nothing, uh, nothing happened. So there are not going to be any arrests or any, any further no, investigation? No, 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 no arrests, nothing. Uh, the police calmed the situ situation. There were about 30 persons who demonstrated against uh, this minister or who he was and he get back in his car and drove away and flew back to Munich, I think, Munich, and then back to Nigeria. Okay. And nothing, nobody, nobody was arrested, uh, so I know. Okay, so the investigation is closed as it is? Yes. Okay. It's no, uh, no police investigation. An exclusive there for Channels Television. And that's all from Abuja. But when the news at 10 returns, Governor of the Central Bank, Godwin Emefele, vows to ensure the country's foreign reserves are not tampered with following British court ruling on seizure of Nigerian assets. That'll be in our business news. To join us again.